If you have seen this page on the PyTorch profiler, you know how to collect PyTorch profiles. Uh, this page also talks about how to print some statistics and how to export uh, the information into a JSON file, which can then be opened uh, using Chrome's Trace Viewer. Unfortunately, this page is a bit light on details on how to use this UI. In this video, I'll go over the analysis of a trace file using this UI. In this example, I'm using a simple again phase stack, specifically the SFT trainer class. Uh, we are using the GPT-2 model. As you can see here, this is the code to set up the PyTorch profiler. We are setting it to collect data from CPU and from CUDA and I'm collecting data for two steps here and so on. Finally, we set up the profiler as a callback in the SFT trainer and we run the training. When the training process is done, the data would be saved as a JSON file. This is what Chrome's tracing look, UI looks like. Once you open it, you can load a trace file using this button. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's start with the main UI elements. So on the left are listed the threads on the CPU first. So this is the main thread and this is the thread used for the backward autograph. Then you also have the GPUs and the threads on the GPUs. So this stream here refers to a CUDA stream. So finally, you also have a process span talking about the PyTorch profiler itself, which you can safely ignore for the moment. In this window, you'll have details of individual calls, which we'll see later. Here, you have a search bar, which is useful to narrow down to particular functions. In the middle is the main flame graph. You can see functions, calling functions, and so on, starting from the Python again face functions here and as you go down to the PyTorch tensor functions and finally to the CUDA function where actual kernels are called. For example here you can see that the run has taken around 200 milliseconds and individual profile steps are also annotated. If you click on a step or any function you can see in the UI below the duration, the start time, and other such metadata. Now, to actually use this UI, the simplest way is to click on a function that you're interested in and press F to zoom in to that function. As you can see here, I've zoomed into profiler step 2, which has a bunch of other functions being called one after the other. So actually, in this example, you can see this function is something to do with data loading. This is the actual training step, which further has two sections, which you can see visually. First is the forward, the compute loss, as you can see here. And the second is the actual backward, the backward pass. You can see that corresponding to this backward pass, there's some activity on the autograph thread. Then you have some other things going on, but I will just point out this uh, optimizer function that is being do that is actually doing the optimization step. At the end of each step. Let's uh, zoom further in to see the forward pass in more detail. So you can see the actual functions being called. This is the PyTorch module, the GPT-2 LM head model 0 and in that again you can see the forward function being called. If I zoom in further you can see each of these are the individual uh, blocks, the decoder blocks. So for instance if I can zoom here uh, this is the GPT-2 block 0. Now I can scroll left and right using the A and D keys. So I can scroll left and right. Here you can see uh, block 1, then you can see block 2 and so on. All of the blocks, 12 blocks are uh, listed one after the other. Now I have brought the GPT-2 architecture image here and if you zoom in to any one of these blocks you can see the components. So here we have the layer norm, followed by the attention block, followed by another layer norm, and then the MLP block. Of course, you can zoom in further to see some more details, but let's look at other things. 
So instead of selecting functions, you can also zoom in freely using the W and S keys. So you can zoom out and zoom in. Now, if I zoom in further into one function using the F command, at the very end of the flame graph, you can actually see the CUDA launch kernel function. So this is where the CPU actually calls the CUDA kernel. Now, you can follow this link from this CUDA kernel to the actual GPU function using this link here. So if I click on this, uh, it makes this link explicit. So this arrow shows the link between the CPU function and the corresponding kernel that has been called on GPU. So if I click on this, you can get details about the specific kernel, the name of the kernel, and some more details about uh, the stream, the number of registers, the shared memory, and so on. You can also see the grid block dimensions and other such things. In this example, the kernel was launched immediately after the CPU function call, but that is not always the case. Let's look at some other example, for instance, this one. So if you try to follow the link, you can see that at this timestamp, the actual CPU calls the kernel, but the kernel itself runs only here. If you zoom out, you can see the difference. And this is because all of these kernels are running as part of a single stream. So there's a dependency between these kernels. They are all on a single queue. So as you can see, there is a lot of activity going on here. Large number of functions, a large number of kernels, generally a lot of data. So one way to get what you're looking for is to use the search functionality. So here you can just type in some string and it highlights the functions that match that string. So if I click on this blocks, I directly go to a matching function, which I can then you know, zoom in and look at in detail. When you start looking at this, one important thing to remember is that the CPU functions don't necessarily correlate with the GPU kernels. So in this example, uh, this is the actual backward pass function. So you may think that the backward pass is done here, but the reality is this backward pass also extends during this period where the CPU is waiting for the kernels to finish execution. You can see this very explicitly by zooming in to some of the last uh, kernels that are launched. For instance, if I click on this and look at when it's actually assigned, you can see that that kernel actually took this, this much time to even get assigned. And only then after it is done, the backward pass is actually complete. So the backward pass ends somewhere over here and not here. So that's it for a quick introduction of this UI. So the important keys you need to know are W and S for zooming in and out, A and D for moving left and right, and simply clicking on a function and pressing F to zoom in to that function. Thank you.